Hey guys, Sean from Living Seeds, your seed guru. Today we're talking about um, worm, worm wee, worm leachate, um, worm effluent, worm farm effluent, uh, whatever you'd like to call it. And we're going to run through a couple of um, misperceptions about worm wee, how it's used, and how you can use it to good effect in your garden. So you've seen this worm farm before. Um, I've got a video on this worm farm um, on the YouTube channel. I think it was a year or so back. And this worm farm is our main um, worm effluent production. So um, I, I see they've harvested a whole lot of, of, uh, of vermicasts out of here. But what we use this worm farm for mainly is to produce um, effluent leachate worm wee from the worm farm and we will use this in a um, in a solution that we create which is activated worm effluent we call it ore because it's awesome um, and it's very simple we have a, a container over here and the container collects uh, worm effluent we pour it into into this barrel over here this barrel um, I think it's a I think it's a 50 liter barrel and it's we normally fill it up to about 25 30 liters um, it's a it's a nice weight to be able to carry and the problem that you have is that there are a lot of people or not a lot of people there are some people saying that um, you can't use worm wee or, 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 or leachate in your soil because it's anaerobic. And the, they correct, but they are grossly incorrect. And let me explain to you what happens inside this, this leachate. And I mean, it's nice and dark, it looks beautiful. So, how the leachate is formed, worms don't actually wee in, in your in your worm farm. What they do is they break down your veggies, they break down the organic matter that you've put into your worm farm and that process releases liquid. And what happens is they eat the, the organic matter inside your worm farm, it passes through their gut and the earthworm's gut is a phenomenal bacteria production system. And the bacteria that it produces is soil bacteria. It doesn't produce anything else. It's, it's literally earthworms are soil bacteria production organisms. That's what they are. And they are fantastic at what they do. So now you, you have this whole process where your leachate comes out and as it's filtering through the worm farm, it's still in an, in an aerobic state because the earthworms are aerobic organisms because they need oxygen to breathe as well as all the other bugs and hojas that are living inside your worm farm. And I'm sure if you've opened it, you've seen there are thousands of different species of hojas inside the worm farm. So this leachate comes out of your worm farm. It's in an aerobic state. But what's happening is that the, the food available to the bacteria is, is dropping at not a very rapid rate, but basically the bacteria see that food is scarce and what happens is they actually go into a state of dormancy and they, they create like a shell around them and uh, I'm simplifying it, but, but they create a shell around them, they harden that shell and that bacteria goes into a dormant state. So inside here we have um, worm leachate, worm effluent, and there's no oxygen. I mean, you can see there's a little bubble of oxygen, but it's been in here for um, for a while. I think it's, um, we actually tried to shoot this video this morning, but the light wasn't so lacquer. So this leachate's been in here for the whole day and there is zero oxygen inside here. I can tell you that now. So what's happened is the bacteria that's in here, a portion of the bacteria has died. These things happen, the bacteria dies. But the vast portion of the, of, the, of the soil bacteria that's inside that leachate is now in a dormant state. And it'll basically stay in that dormant state 
Um, depending on the bacteria species, it's not one bacteria species. There are thousands of bacteria species inside there. And they have different lifespans in their dormant state. Um, the longest research that I've been able to, to see is um, about two and a half years. So uh, that's quite extensive. So I'm not saying store this stuff for two and a half years. What I am saying is that don't worry too much about the bacteria being in a dormant state because we can wake them up. And the fastest way to wake this bacteria up is to expose it to food and to oxygen. They are aerobic bacteria. They need oxygen to reproduce, to survive. They also need food to survive. And if you go and look um, a couple of months back, there's a video on how we make our activated worm effluent. We add molasses. We add um, a fish tank pump. Well, we have an air stone inside the, inside the container with a with a, a, um, a little fish tank pump bubbling away that moves the, um, the liquid in the container, number one. Number two, as those bubbles break the surface, you have an oxygen exchange that, that's happening and you produce oxygen in your activated worm effluent. And the molasses provides sugar, which is food for this bacteria, and you have a population explosion of note. And it's, it's, it's astounding. Within 48 hours, you can smell your activated worm effluent is, um, it, it sort of has a fruit juice flavor to it, or a fruit juice flavor. Let me, I haven't drunk it. <laughs> it has a fruit, a fruit let me, let me um, re, re, um, re-pronounce it. It has a fruit juice um, scent to it. It smells a little bit like fermenting fruit. And, and that tells you that your, worm effluent is at the perfect stage to put into your soil. Now what's happened is that worm effluent is now in an aerobic phase. The, the bacteria are replicating, the bacteria are having sex, the bacteria are feeding, um, they are just going absolutely to town. Because there's oxygen and there's food and they just, it's, how's it guys, we are having a jaw. Now if you take that bacteria and you pour it into your soil, you are pouring aerobic bacteria into your soil. Sorry, you are pouring aerobic soil bacteria into your soil and this is where this bacteria wants to be. We have tried experiments where we've tried spraying um, this activated worm effluent on our plants. We have seen minimal results, close to zero, because the bacteria that you're spraying on the leaves is a soil bacteria. It's not supposed to be exposed to sunlight. It's not supposed to be exposed to um, the, the, um, um, the environmental conditions that happen on the outside of the plant. What they are supposed to be doing is they're supposed to be exposed to soil conditions. And that aerobic bacteria is now inside your soil. And those of you that have used activated worm effluent on your plants, you have noticed literally a, a, a 12 hour you water with worm effluent this evening, tomorrow morning your plants look different. They're a different color, they're vibrant, they're standing up, they actually look like they're proud. So guys, yes, just to sum up, activated worm effluent, in this, in, in this state over here, it is, it is anaerobic. Um, you can use it on your soil, you can pour it directly onto your soil. What will happen is the bacteria will slowly wake up inside your soil, they'll find food. There, there is nothing wrong with using this directly on your soil. There is nothing wrong with you diluting it. We've used it neat on the soil, no issues. We've, di we've diluted it to make it go further, no issues. Um, the method that we prefer is to turn it into activated worm effluent because the results are so much more dramatic. Guys, if you've enjoyed the information that I've shared with you today, please subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thank you very much.